In the 15th verse, you'll find these words in the book of Esther, of the second chapter. Now, when the turn of Esther, the daughter of Abihel, the uncle of Mordecai, who had taken her for his daughter, was come to go in unto the king, she required nothing but what had the king chamber, the keeper of the women appointed, and Esther obtained favor in the sight of all them that right. and looked upon her. Yes. Is that in your Bible? Yes. Amen. I want to read a little bit further. So Esther was taken unto the king of Hasbrus in his house for the tenth month, which is the month Tebeth, the seventh year of the reign. And the king loved Esther yeah. above all the women, and she obtained grace and favor in his sight more than all the virgins, so that he set the royal crown upon her head and made her queen instead of Vashti. I want, I want to talk uh, about for a very few moments of the day uh, the, the risk of leadership. All right. See, this is concluding now. The conference, I want to deal with the risk of leadership. Thanks to, one, once again, the awesome instructors for what they've done uh, this week regarding uh, dealing with, with leadership. At any time you, can I, can I just teach for a moment? At any time you deal with Risk. Uh, risk is, is defined uh, by, by Marion Webster as being uh, uncertain danger. Risk is uh, the possibility of suffering harm or loss or danger. Then and it says further that the potential that a chosen action or activity could possibly lead to, to loss. Uh, it's it's an undesirable outcome. An undesirable outcome. And, and many of us at some stages in our life have had some undesirable outcomes. Amen. There's not one person, none of my boys, has always had a wonderful outcome. There have been circumstances in your life that the outcome has not always been a popular outcome. And, and when you read um, this drama, this power and romance in, in Esther, it, it, it is the kind of stuff that make a novel sale. Uh, but far from the modern piece of fiction, of these words, you will find that Esther is a true love story. All right. and, and it lives among many centuries of writers. And more than, than just an entertaining book, Esther is, is a book that it, it is a story about a hidden but yet active God. In, in, in other words, guess what? Uh, let me find some. Uh, preachers here, they all know this. Uh, you don't see God's name nowhere around, but He is still active. Matter of fact, His name is not even mentioned in Esther, but guess what? You see, you see, you see nothing but the actions of God. You, you, don't, you don't even see it written. Uh, you, don't, you don't see Yahweh. You don't see Jehovah. You don't see Shalom. You you see nothing, but you still see the activity of God. Yeah. Let me make. Let me drop it into that. You, you you don't see wind, but you can feel it. Oh man, I mean, God. You don't see His name, but God is still active. Now, there are many of you who would never call on the name of God, but you still see him moving in your faith. I mean, you, 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 you may not, your doctor may not know God, but you see God's activity working. Your lawyer may never know God, but just because of who you are, and God loves you 
God, you can see the activity of God. Your banker don't even know God, but yet still, when you write the check, you know you ain't got enough money in the bank, how God put some elastic in your account just so that your check won't bounce. He is a hidden but yet active God. So, so God prepares the place and the opportunity and his people. Uh, and Esther and, and, and Mordecai happen to be uh, two of the, the chosen actors in the play. Now, uh, I want to say something about Esther. Esther, uh, you know, everybody got a second name. You know, two, three other names. You know, your your your, your name may uh, be John, but they they call me Little John. You know, y'all ain't saying that. Uh, you know, your your name Carolyn, but they call you Pie Baby. <laughs> you know, everybody. Hey, something right, something like that. They, you know, they they call you Bud. You know. Call you June Book. And you know, uh, some of y'all got some names that never need to be mentioned. Mm -hmm. But Esther, Esther, I want to talk about Esther. E Esther's Hebrew name was Hadasha. But, but also her name meant Myrtle. Uh, so, so, but here, her Persian name, Esther, was derived from the Persian name, uh, which means stop. Now, now, one of the things, come on, let me get these brothers to talk to me. Uh, Esther was a star. Wrong side. Let me get some of these guys over here. Now. Esther was a star. She was, she was everything, every, every, every man wants a star. Don't make me peep around the corner. And, and guess what? Every, every woman I know that go to this church, if you visit, I don't know you yet. Uh, but every woman in this church thinks she a star. <laughs> Even if she ain't a star, she thinks she's a star. It's all right. 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 Amen. It's all right. Amen. Judge, I'm your pastor. Come on, man. She thinks she the star. She don't tell them nothing. Else. And, and, and the Greek title for the book is Esther, but the Latin title is Kessa. Uh, so Ahasuerus, he shows up. He, uh, the, the Hebrew name uh, for him was uh, Xerxes. So at some point you'll see me saying Ahasuerus and Xerxes. They're both the same person. Then there, here comes my other friend that's, uh, uh, that's part of this story, the name Haman. He was rich. Powerful, he wanted status, he would, but also he was unsatisfied. He was discontent, and sometimes you can want power, and, and, and many people that strive for power, that there's always something on the inside that guess what? They are unsatisfied with. Amen. One of the things you never have to do, you never have to make yourself be bigger than somebody else. Amen. Wherever you are, you just learn how to be that and God bless you yeah. right at that spot. Yeah. Am I making sense? Yeah. Uh, so so he, he go, then, then, then here comes my, my, my last character. I want to deal with Mordecai. Mordecai, uh, he has strength of character. He had godly conviction and he had assurance in God. And, and, and Haman knew uh, Mordecai was a better man, but a better man than he was because Haman was a rascal and Mordecai was saved. And Mordecai hated the fact that, uh, I mean, Haman hated the fact that Mordecai loved God. And let me help you with something. People will hate you because you love God. And matter, matter of fact, they don't hate the stuff, uh, they, 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 they don't hate the stuff that you got, but they hate the God you serve to help you get it. Lord have mercy. So the, here, here comes, here comes the piece that I really want to offer today. 
uh, that, that there was a royal affair for the purpose of conferring with the chiefs and the leaders in preparation for they was getting ready to go to war, they was getting ready to go to Greece. And Xerxes felt that he could conquer Greece and the gathering. They had a party. Let, let me find some of my ex-party folk in here. They had a party for 180 days. special feast in, in the king's beautiful garden. And, and, but I, I need to tell you the other part. For 180 days they had been drinking for 100, oh, yes. 180 days. Now, now, now let, me, let, me just, let me just place a pen there because y'all ain't got time to get the history. Um, I got some friends up, up north. They, they've been drinking for 180 days. Matter of fact, they, they probably drank for about 365. Uh, they get up in the morning drink. They drank for lunch. Yes. Drank for dinner. They drank for a midnight snack. They just drank all the time. But during this time of this particular party of 180 days, the women, the women followed in a Persian practice. <laughs> Uh, the women, all of a sudden, they began to have a separate banquet. And anxious to please uh, the Xerxes, uh, he asked the queen to come to the men's banquet. Uh, her name was Vashtis. And, and, and one thing about Vashtis, she, she was a woman of class. She knew that the boys had been drinking for 180 days. Now, come on, women, help me here. You don't need to be in no company, no, no, <clears throat> no men that's been drinking for 180 days, and and you the only woman in the party. In the body. Come, come on, you don't need to be in no company. Not, not if the brothers been drinking for 180 days. You, know, you, you matter of fact, some of y'all don't need to be there if it's overnight. But you know. So I want to deal with chapter, y'all already shouted, so I can be my teacher. So, uh, so between chapter 1 and chapter 2, between chapter 1 and chapter 2, four years had passed. You have to read the history. There were four years gone by during which Xerxes went on with this disastrous Greek campaign. He came home, he came home, he came home, he came home. He came home. He came home, he came home one day bitter because he had to remember when Vastis refused to come before the men, uh, they, they recommended, let's get rid of her. Yeah, yeah let's get rid of her. Let's, let's oust her. Let's, let's send her away. So all of a sudden, he ain't got nobody to come home to. Come on, help me here. Now, I, this ain't part of the message, but since y'all are quiet, let me talk a little bit. Uh, you know, one of the hardest things um, uh, for, for men to deal with is the fact of being alone. How much you are, yeah. you know how you think you the stuff. The average man can't handle be alone. Let me let me, let me, let me take you there. Yeah. Back in the Genesis account, when there was nobody here but him, him and some folk. Yeah. Him, him, yeah, yeah. him, yeah. him. Yeah. him. Yeah. It was him, him and the animal folk. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And guess what? So, so Adam on one occasion. He, he seen Mr. and Mrs. Cracker die. There was a, there was a, 
Mr. and Mrs. Elephant, yeah. Mr. and Mrs. Snake, I mean Mr. and Mrs. and Mrs. Rhinoceros and all that kind of stuff. And then he, everybody had somebody, but he didn't have nobody. Yeah, yeah. So over between chapter 1 and chapter 2 of Genesis, you ain't got time to read. Let me take you back. The Bible says it is not good that man. Now y'all hear it. It is not good for man to be alone. Now, now let me come on talk to me here. Let me help you with something about your man in case if you don't understand it. Let me, if you tell him I'm going to the grocery, he know how long it take you to go to the grocery. Let me unwrap that for you. Can I do that? Guess what? He know if you told him I'm going to the grocery to get some bread, butter, and milk, he already know how long it take you to get a shower, put your clothes on, get your pocketbook. Check the little zipper part to see if you got any money. Get your checkbook. He know how long it take you to bag out the driveway. He know he know what light you got to go through. How long the light is gonna hold you. He know how long it take you to get to Crocus. He know where you usually park when you go to the grocery store. Most women usually park in the same place. He know how long it take you to walk into the grocery store. The men ain't talking in here. And, 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 and guess what? He also knows in case if he, she never, he never told you. He know where the bread, the butter, and the milk is located in the grocery store. He also has given you some miscellaneous time. Miscellaneous time is in case if you've seen somebody from the church that you wanted to have a conversation with. So he, he knows it, how long it takes you to get to the counter to check out the bread, the butter, and the milk. And he gives you the second miscellaneous time if the line happened to be long. Guess what he know? Guess what? You got a small package, so you can carry that out in the plastic bag by yourself. So you ain't got to wait on nobody to roll your basket out. He know how long it take you to get there to the car, drive back to the house. Now, if by chance he called you in the middle of the time you left and the time you got back, is because it took you to know. And let me help you with something. Come close to help me here. It's because he's struggling with the fact of loneliness because you have moved away from him. Come on, be in touch. I need to deal with this for a moment. Watch this. One of the worst things about a man is if his right arm ever jumped off his body and ran out the door, he would feel disconnected. You know why? Because in the closeness of a woman to him, she feels a part of him and he feels when it is moving away. Oh, let me just go. So, so let me deal with this. So he, he goes on. Let me, let, me, let me get out this place. I got to go. So, so, so he deals, he deals, he deals, but he, 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 he is they quiet. So, 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 so he came home and he was a bitter man. And let me tell you something, ain't the women. Well, the word, this is love, right? Yeah. Hey, yeah. ain't, ain't, ain't nothing worse than a bitter man. Let me hear God with something. That women ain't talking to me, but you don't want him. You don't want him to be bitter. You want him to be a lot of things. Go on fixing the banana pudding or whatever you want. But guess what? You don't want that man to be bitter. And then he came home. He was bitter. And only naturally he. He wanted to seek some comfort. The Lord eyes. So, so because he missed his beautiful queen, I need to address something this morning. 
every woman in here, whether you want to be or not, guess what? God has made you be a queen. Let me tell you something. Can I help you with something? And stop denouncing yourself to be anything else other than what God made you to be. Every man in here is the king. And every queen needs a king. Suddenly he had some counselors. I, I need to go home now. And all of a sudden, he, it's just the first time he had it. The counselors advised him, uh, okay, let me tell you what you need to do. You need to go ahead and get you another queen. And, and, and if Vastus had gotten back on the throne, she might have been punished, uh, punished her husband's counselors. Thus being the, the great man that he was, he searched for ideas, and, and then guess who shows up on the scene? Man, Queen Esther shows up. Now, now let me help you with something. For every person in here, God always got this love. Yeah, uh, God always got the right person for you if you got time to wait. I need to open the door right there. Yeah. If you got, and now, now the problem with some of you babies in the church, you got a major problem with waiting because your flesh overrules your spirit. The average person in here, they can't handle, they can't handle their flesh. Uh, now I'm gonna deal with that for a minute since y'all quiet and I feel like talking. I feel like talking this morning. Uh, I wanna teach this part, you know, I got some guys that work for me somewhere. They uh, they 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 from India, and and one of the things about the Indian culture, the guys never get married until they from the age of 24 to 26. So they'll go home, and they folk have already put an uh, ad in the paper that my, it's time for my son to get married. And, and guess what? By the time he get home, he never seen this woman but once. And guess what? He turns around and have to get married the next day. Now that ain't in the, that ain't in the United States. No, sir. No, no. That's not in the United States. So, so I need to help y'all with something else. Watch, watch this. Uh, uh, one of the things about him, when he gets married to this woman, that this this guy has never touched a woman a day.